Hi everyone. When doing project, I often use electrical boxes like this one here to house the electronics. As so far, this is the best solution that I've found without actually owning a 3D printer to make a custom enclosure for the projects. These boxes are, are about 85 to 85 millimeters wide and the inside is close to 80 millimeters. So they make it a good solution for most of the projects. But when I tried to fit my uh, Node MCU project board, I realized that it won't fit because of the pillars that are for the cover to, to be screwed on. So that gave me the idea that I need to make a board that's dedicated for this type of box that I can fit directly inside and secure it on these columns that are on the back. This other box has a similar construction, but the mounting pillars are a bit further apart. So I made a template out of cardboard that will fit to both of the electrical boxes. As you can see, there is a bit of room on the outside so the PCB can go in easily uh, and you can also see that it fits nicely in this board now based on the dimensions of this cardboard template let's jump to the computer and start designing the board I've started the design process right in Altium 365 that's the platform that you get with Altium Designer where if you create the projects from there you immediately get it set up with version control so you can then open it uh, in Altium Designer from there and because this project will be just a prototype PCB, I've started by directly adding the PCB to the project without bothering to create any schematics because we will not have uh, an electrical connections there. Next, I continued by placing a rectangle as the basic shape of the uh, PCB and I've sized that to be 78 by 78 millimeters. So there is enough room and clearance on the sides of the electrical box. After that, I've set the origin to be in the left bottom corner so I can reference all of the other dimensions from there. Now, this is the first time that I'm actually building a PCB that has a cutout like this. So it's not a rectangular or a circular shape. So I struggled a bit to find the right way to do it. Probably this is not correctly, but hey, that's what did work for me. So I've started by drawing the shape based on the dimensions that I had uh, from the cutout. So each cutout will be 18 millimeters from the side and then nine millimeters into the, um, the shape, into the rectangle that I just created. So I've used the dimensions uh, tool to mark out where those nine millimeters are based on the distance from the edge of the board and I also transferred that dimension to to the right side. Now my initial thought was that I would be able to just add a line between the dots and then I would be able to have a tool to make a cutout. Uh, that didn't work out correctly but uh, apparently knowing now I would uh, I was supposed to break down this rectangle to be uh, part of polygons instead of using the rectangle as a whole that would be much easier but in the end I made a new shape uh, that I draw out based on that rectangle using just the lines and now I've used that rectangle to just reduce one of the sides. Now when I had the final shape I duplicated that rectangle four times and I placed it in the corners and I first wanted to select everything and create a cutout in the PCB. For some reason that didn't work on all of them, just on the final one. And some of the squares, uh, some of the shapes here were probably not really lined up correctly. And I felt like if that's not really uh, the way to do it. So I deleted all of the cutouts and with the remaining lines, I just connected them with another straight line. And that seemed to did the trick because now I could select the line and define the board outline based on that line. So that made the shape exactly as I wanted. Now with the shape defined, I want the spacing of the holes on the boards to be 2.54 millimeters or 100 mil. This is a standard header that I use like on the Node MCUs and many other development boards. So I've started adding pads on the board. I first added a few of them and then I copied the, the rest. So when I had a full row, I copied the entire row and then 
I multiplied it to fill in the rest of the board, making a good and nice grid that is uh, all equally spaced. And since I'm using the 100 mil grid on the designer, I know that all of the holes will be spaced correctly, both vertically and horizontally. So I copied the rest of the holes until I filled the entire available space. Here I copied a few pads that were unnecessary, but I could easily delete those. And as you can see now that we have the mesh, but it's not really well aligned to the board. So here I'm using the PCB filter to select all of the pads and then move them slightly uh, so I can center them. When you're moving the entire board like this, because the grid will not be like precise, I was struggling to get them aligned on the center of the board. But then I also realized that I could also reduce the grid size. So I reduced the grid size to 50 mil. And with that, I was able to perfectly align the, the holes to be on the center of the board. And to help me guide some of the mounting holes that I wanted to add on the board, I've added two guidelines, one horizontal and one vertical. These guidelines will help me to have snapping on them. So I know that the mounting holes are perfectly on the center of the board and they will align with the pillars that are in the electrical box. Now, additional to the guidelines, you can also have snap points, which are just a point in space and Using the editor, I've added one on the middle of that pillar, which is about 15 millimeters from the edge. And I've placed a new pad that I've sized to have a larger dimension. I've played a bit with the size and I've used one of the rulers that I have to quickly realize what size I need. So at the end, I settled on a size that it's 2.5 millimeters in diameter and three millimeters in total with the pad. It's still a pad which will just have a larger holes. And when I was happy with that size, I just duplicated that four times. So I've added one more on the vertical line by adding a snap point that will be my guide where that needs to be placed. I've deleted the pads from there and just pasted the same hole as I had before then. For the horizontal line, I added two more guides and also two more pasted copies of that hole, which is enlarged. Now, this is the finalized PCB and I was quite happy with how it turned out. Just for the sake of having it look nicer, I've added my logo on the, on the center and at the beginning I mistaken the layer, so I've added it to make the mechanical layer where I instead I wanted to add it to the top overlay and that will be printed on the board with a bit of just aligning everything. Now the board was uh, completely ready and it was ready so I could make a production version or production output. I tried adding text but because of all the holes that didn't look uh, very well so I decided that I would leave it out and I will just go with the logo. To get a PCB manufacturing outputs, you need to go and uh, export uh, Gerber files that can be used to, to be sent to the PCB provider. I'll be using PCB way. I also extracted the drill files. So with everything ready, I've created a zip file with all of the files and we can use that zip file when we are basically ordering the board. I followed all of the defaults, so basically I'm not changing anything here except for allowing them to offer a different kind of finish if they feel like necessary. So here you can see me uploading the Gerber file and with that the order was now waiting approval. After a few minutes that approval was already done and the board went into production. So now with the PCBs ordered and in production, we need to wait for a few days for them to arrive. And up until then, you can subscribe down below. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions regarding this design of the PCB that I did. And before you go, you can also check out this video where I've built this programmer for the 80 tiny chips.